Hey, hey, welcome back to another exciting episode of Yomo, a year of magical learning. Today, we're on book 113, 113. So um, it's a book that uh, I have, I guess, on the fence about, um, but I'll let Chris uh, introduce the book and we can talk about it. Well, I think uh, I think that we're all, well, I'll, well, I'll pause after I introduce the book here. <laughs> um, the, the book is, um, it's, it's called Let My People Go Surfing, The Education of a Reluctant Businessman by Yvonne Schwenard, who is... Um, the um, uh, Yvonne Schwenard is the the legendary climber, businessman, environmentalist, and founder of Patagonia. Um, and this is the story of um, his life and the founding of Patagonia, and um, you know how they do things differently, and you know, um, and and um, you know, just basically, basically all about Patagonia and how he how he imparts his values onto onto the business in general. Um, and uh, yeah, we all. We all picked this book together, Blake. I I think you read this with us, didn't you? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was a while ago, but uh, yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like that was like almost two years ago now. Um, that we all mm-hmm. read this one. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. So the so we'll all pause there because I know that we all had mixed feelings on the book itself. I mean, that's not the, the reflection that doesn't really have much to do with the book, but right. Um, uh, you know, I I'll, I'll pause there. I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on just the book in general. Um, you know, uh, it, would you recommend it? Number one. I guess it depends on what you want. Uh, I mean, to me, if you want to learn how, uh, I guess you you could. But at the same time, I think it's the lessons you want to take away from it. And so, like I said, you know, I've learned something from reading the book. Right. I don't like the book because of the, I guess, the way that it's presented. Um, And I can tell you more uh, if we're talking about it in the book. Uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, I mean, we we can talk about All it. Right. I mean, I mean, if, 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 I mean, I don't know if I should tell people about the book. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. No, no worries. Right, Blake, what's, what's your, what's your thoughts? Well, it's been a while, so I will say that, but I will, I remember that it wasn't, it, there wasn't much that stuck with me. I felt like it was pretty slow, pretty boring. And <laughs> It's just kind of like I remember after reading it, was, I just I didn't feel like there were any great major takeaways or anything. I was kind of like, OK, that that's what it is, what it is. And then I mean, I forgot, honestly, most of it. I just remember bits and pieces of it. But so I told you, it didn't leave a big impression on me. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, I mean, t- to be fair, I, I'm, I'm in the same, I think we're all in the same camp here. I, I mean, this is a book that, that I personally would recommend on this journey. Um, and, and, you know, what's funny is it this is probably about the turning point of this journey in my personal opinion of when I just really stopped reading business books in general. Um, uh, like this was, this, this was, you know, like the nail in the coffin for me almost where I was like, I was like, gosh, like there's just, isn't, I don't want to learn what, what this, the, the, these people were teaching or trying to teach and get the message that they're getting across this. Cause I was like, I want to, and we want to think differently about how we go through this whole entire process and how we think of clubbing and how we think of the culture that we're trying to build. Wasn't um, this a nickel recommendation? It, it was actually, uh, it was, it was a book that he was like, I heard, you know, let my people go surfing was like a really, I mean, it is to be fair. Like it's a really highly rated, you know, business book. I mean, this guy's a really famous, successful entrepreneur and, and, you know, eccentric personality and a lot of people really enjoy it anyway. All right. Enough, enough of the the book review. This is that's not what the year of magical learning is about. The the, uh, the year of magical learning is about learning and what did we learn from this book and how do we apply it to our life. So, uh, so I'm gonna share my screen and we'll get to it. Uh, reflection for the day is about um, the seventh generation Iroquois, um, and uh, this is something that True and I I know we hold near and dear to our heart. Mm-hmm. This is this is actually the seventh generation Iroquois meeting right now. Um, the uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to what that means in a second here, but, um, that, uh, the year of magical learning, um, came out of the, uh, our seventh generation Iroquois meeting. And now it has usurped our seventh generation Iroquois meeting to, you know, this is what we focus on right now to, to build out our values and to figure out, you know, how we, how we want club to look seven generations into the future. So we'll, uh, it's, it's kind of, kind of fascinating, honestly. Um, so, uh, um, onto the reflection in general. So Yvonne Schwenard, so he started off, as you guys know, you guys read the book, you know, he started off as the Patagonia, um, uh, he's, when he started Patagonia, it was, uh, he just really liked climbing, he liked being outdoors, he liked, he liked doing, he, he liked expressing his values and things that he really enjoyed, and that was being outside, rock climbing, doing, doing stuff that he was passionate about, and, and being out in nature, like this is, this is what he cared about, um, and uh, he saw a problem in his own little area to build 
some nicky nacky things here and there to to help his passions um and and rock climb better and help his buddies and his meaningful relationships out there to to help rock climb better as well and um started making you know equipment to help them all and uh he paid the bills and he was able to continue to do what he did and he was living a pretty balanced life he was really enjoying it um slowly but surely uh as as time went along he um uh, started to uh you know get get asked for more and asked for more and he ended up he ended up making more and more things and then slowly but surely the scales tipped i don't know when it happened but you know um slowly but surely you know as uh, as the company grew and he founded a company and then started to get a lot of customers and then he started to find out that he had to have customer service and hire employees and and this business you know kind of snowballed out of you know uh what what originally was just him trying to help feed his own passions and values and stuff like that um uh now you know the scales tipped and and he found himself in a situation where he was a failing businessman he was a failing you know nature enthusiast and failing at all the things in his life right you know so he um uh that was when you know patagonia really really shifted around in general that was when they really put a pause on the business and they uh they all took a hard look in the mirror and they all decided hey if we're gonna if we're gonna run this business like you know let's run it the way that we want to run it and how and, and how we want to run it and and do it for the reasons why we care about um so that was when patagonia really shifted and took off and turned to more of a value-based business you know um they they said hey this is what we care about this is how we're going to operate and this is what we're going to do um very similar to what you know what we're trying to do here with uh with club in general so once they once they finally made that strategic shift i guess and and really locked in on on uh hammering away at their at their purpose and their and their values uh that was when you know patagonia you know took off and um and out of that spun a lot of really innovative ideas of uh work life integration and um you know they were pretty they were pretty uh cutting edge for their time uh by expressing their values in general and how they and some of the ideas that came out of that one of those ideas that came out of it was something called the seventh generation iroquois which um i didn't know at the time this was something i learned from the book um that's the idea from that's that was taken from the the Iroquois tribe, where um, they have this philosophy where they always try to to you know make every decision and think how would this impact the the welfare of seven generations into the future um, if we make this decision today, right? So uh, Patagonia formed the seventh generation Iroquois committee, and um, you know every decision that they made, they they really filtered through that lens of hey, this is what we care about. This is this is what this is what the world we want it to look like, you know, and, and the impact that we want to have in the future. So they would filter it through this seventh generation committee. I thought that was a really innovative idea and I uh, really loved it. So True and I, um, you know, we, uh, we we loved it so much that we actually turned it into um, our own seventh generation committee meeting um, every single night. So after True and I met, um, we, uh, uh, we we would meet every single night and and we were we were building this idea and Club and he was slowly starting to take shape and we were you know, we were learning all this new stuff and we were expressing and living our values. And, you know, after we, after we finished this book, some, somewhere along the way that, that nightly meeting that true and I had, uh, we got the great idea to, to call that our, our, our seven generation Iroquois meeting. Uh, so that was our, our meeting to talk about like, what is club and what are the values that we want to build here? What are, what's the, what's the vision? What's the mission? What's the future that we want to, um, and the decisions that we want to build going forward. The big difference between what we're doing and what Patagonia is doing is we're doing this beginning with the end in mind from the start. You know, they, they had a pivot midway through most businesses, I feel like, are that as well. I mean, I feel like they just start because something works and then, you know, midway through they 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 either either figure it out or they don't figure it out or they make that shift or they don't make that shift. Um, but uh, um, we're we're starting from the beginning of, of Club and, e and this culture that we're trying to build. Uh, with that seventh generation Iroquois idea in mind and uh, and always filtering everything that we do through that value framework. And um, it's been pretty powerful. I mean, this this year magical learning journey came out of that committee meeting, you know, and, um, and that's what we're doing today. So um, uh, personally for me, like the big lesson, you know, summing it all up here is that's the power of core values in a nutshell. If you, uh, if you give the control and direction you need to, uh, they can give you the control and direction you need to build that sustainable universe and and if you always strive to filter your <clears throat> your decisioning through that core values engine, um, you know I think it's going to be a success no matter what the outcome. Even if it sucks, you know, even if even if it's a total disaster, you at least know you did what you said you care about, and um, that's a success in my mind. So I'll uh, I'll pause there. The, the question I can you know uh, pose for you guys is what would happen if you stopped reacting to the world around you, and started using your core values to play offense instead. You know, instead of like the Patagonia people where they were playing defense the whole time until they decided to say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. You know, um, 
you know, how would that, how would that impact your life? So uh, I'll pause there. Love to get your guys' thoughts. Why are you cracking it first, Blake? Really? What's that? Blake, can you crack at it first? I mean, I just think about a lot of the companies that I've worked for and even like my parents have started their own business and how maybe like why you originally they get into something um, and then kind of what it turns into. And it seems like it becomes, yeah, very reaction, you know, based on something that pops up in the moment, either a shiny object, you know, trying to pivot because it sounds good in the moment that might help them. But, and it just seems like a lot of people, it doesn't become enjoyable anymore. Um, and they make decisions thinking about, you know, what might benefit them right now. And they don't, aren't really thinking very far in the future. I mean, I'm sure we saw a lot of that where we worked, Chris, where there were a lot of pivots of, yeah. you know, it just turned yeah. into, it was know, like, it was like a squirrel. Like, I mean, you're like, you're like, you know, it's like the, it's like those, the cartoon with it. He's like squirrel, whoop, you know? And like, I mean, it was every single day. It was like, whoop, you know, we're going that way. We're going that way. We're going that way. We're going that way. You know, and I've worked at another company where it's like, you know, Hey, this is the market we want to go after. And we kept telling them, Hey, this market, there's only so many people we can sell to. And after that ran out, you know, all the salespeople were in a bad position because then all of a sudden we, you know, we pretty much saturated the market and, we hadn't planned and you know done any market research on other markets and you know we get it and it's interesting too i think it seems like from what i've heard from people who live in other countries that americans are very instant gratification focused think right now and it seems like mindsets of people in other countries are more thinking down the road and like long-term effects and i think that's something that i know at least i can't speak for all people but i know at least me I have to be very conscious and aware of thinking about my actions and decisions and sometimes how it can affect other people and how it can, you know, what affects and, and what could be the results, you know, not just right instantly, but down the road that could happen from my decisions that I make or actions that I take. And I just have to be very conscious and aware to think sometimes a little bit further ahead about decisions that I make, actions that I take. Um, and I think that's, we need to think more like that. And I don't think most people do a very good job of that. So I think people do it all the time. I don't think they even think anything most of the time, to be honest yeah. with you. I think most people usually think about well, how's this, how's this going to benefit? This is what I want right now. This is how it's going to benefit me. And they don't see the ramifications or, you know, potential downfalls that could happen from it or other people it could affect negatively. You know, it's kind of like, this is what I want and this is what I want now. And this is, and it, they don't really think outside of what they want in that moment and how, how they, in the, in the best possible scenario, how it could benefit them. And that's all yeah. they focus on. I mean, any business can fail. Like, let's just be honest with you. Any, any, any culture can fail, but, but what I know won't be a failure at the end of the day is if like, I'm doing stuff with you guys and we're having fun and we're doing what we're doing. Like, I don't care if, if we, if we just folded up shop tomorrow and said, Hey, this just isn't working out or whatever. Like. I know that I'm going to still keep fighting for living a balanced life in my life. And, um, and at the same time, I know that I had a really fun time doing this with you guys. So like, like that, that's kind of what I'm getting at it, it, with my idea around like, that, that's what Patagonia has. They have a whole culture built around this stuff. Now they didn't before, like before there was no, I guess, kind of why behind it. Right. You know, they, they just were, they were reactionary. They were doing what they needed to do just to make ends meet. And they were doing none of it good, you know, like, and, and here's my, like kind of just general thought, like, look, any, any business like is going to have, I don't know. We don't know what the ramifications are of what we're doing today or not. Like, and I'm not, I don't, I don't really care. All I know is if I'm doing it with people that I like and I'm doing stuff that I like, then, then I'm cool with it. You know, like, like, so uh, like, that's my, that's my thought on a lot of this stuff um, of like where the seventh generation Iroquois comes into play. Like if, if the actions that we decide to do today are guided by our values uh, that ultimately lead to meaningful work and meaningful relationships. I, I don't care what the hell we do is, 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 and, and I'm sure in seven generations, we'll be proud of what we did, you know? Um, uh, but I know that we won't, if we say like, Hey, we got to go make some money. Like we got to turn this into a business venture that makes money or, or we gotta, we gotta hit this quarterly profit so we can hire more people or whatever. Like, like if we start to like make decisions just based off of, I don't know. I mean, I guess growth or, you know, business metrics or whatever it may be like our decisions are all about the culture, right? Like this is all about like, what do, who, how do we want to live? 
and and who do we want to bring into this into this world and and that's that like i mean like it it, it shouldn't change i mean and it won't change like i if, think if true and i have any to say the same thing to say about it that's i mean that's com- very i mean it seems like most people i know businesses that fail or people that you know end up saying okay i'm done with this now but if by the end you know like you said hey no matter what you'd be like hey i enjoyed it um you know it was worth it a lot of people it seems by the end they it's stressful they hate it yeah and you know it's no longer enjoyable which i think that's sucks very common to, <laughs> to, to have something you know that maybe started with good intention and joy in the beginning turns into that i agree true get in this so for me it's like it's different between playing offense and defense uh, everybody's playing defense and if you don't uh have an offensive playbook, um, meaning you're not looking down the line. You're not doing, it reminds me of that book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where he talking about the the quadrants, you know, the, uh, um, the important, but not urgent. And if you think and you play the playbook in the sense of looking for the long-term goal versus today, because if whatever we do today, we don't people don't think about it because they're not playing offense they're playing defense is really they're reacting to the stimuli around them and so when you do that um you're not gonna last long because eventually you're gonna get bored or you can get stressed out and if, most of the time it's not gonna go your way because you are reacting to the things and things are moving before you have a chance to do anything with it but you play an offense you know the outcome. The outcome that that you uh, plan more than more than more likely than not, it will come to have a percentage much higher to come to a fruition than playing defense. I mean, defense is almost like one zero 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 percent, right? If you're playing offense, you may have like maybe five percent. It's still low, but much much higher than point zero 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 one, right? And so for me, if you know, you're talking about the 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 book, the quadrant, you're talking about your your long-term goal, which is 10 years, 20 years. But if you're taking the air core, the seventh generation air core, you're taking that seventh time. That's really long. And and when you do that, there's two things you get. The first thing is, you know, you are going to have a uh, a heck of a good time doing whatever effort that you're doing because that aligns with your value and that's what you wanted to do. It's not because you had to, it's because you wanted to do. Right. Regardless of whether the the like you could say, you know, if you know today or tomorrow we say, hey, you know, uh we call it quits. We still had fun. We still had the good time and we still have good memories. And we I have no regret in in terms of the effort and the time I put into it. And so to me, that is a worthwhile endeavor. Uh, as a long term and the seventh generation air core is is going to it's, it's a long it's a long enough, it's for long <laughs> yeah it's, it's a yeah. it's you know it is it's long enough generations that you know you even even seventh generation down whatever you did you still be proud of whatever outcome a lot of time when you were acting something it's okay today but then you know the next generations or next year whatever it's not what you really want it. Therefore, you are struggling to hold it like a hot potato versus something that's, you know, you want to have and want to hold and keep. And so having the proaction of creating your own seventh generation, a thinking about, okay, if I did this today, how would it impact this, the, you know, the like the company or whatever, seventh generation down. And you do that, you know, you're going to have, uh, the best of both worlds, meaning that you're going to enjoy and you're going to get what you want. Because even if you don't get what you want, you still enjoy it because, you know, that you you are aligning the action with something that uh, that it fulfills you. I, I think of I think of two really important things. I, I agree with everything you just said. Uh, you know, obviously this is, you know, we're, we're in alignment because this is what we do. But um, uh, but the um, I think of I think of first and foremost, this year magical learning journey for forever in perpetuity we have documented what our our values are what's important to club and e mm-hmm. and then and then we talked about it like this will be here forever right like this this will never go away and um and if anybody ever goes well how'd you guys get to this well here we go like i mean you you can you can follow along with this journey we can use this content 
however we want to. At the same time, we're formulating our ideas even further and further as we go through this whole entire journey together. Um, and, and, you know, by the time we come out of this, it'll be just a start, but at least we know for sure where, what, are, what's important to this culture that we are trying to build. That is what we call clubbing. And we know what we want to do going forward. And anybody will never, will there, it will never be a question where the intentions were. And if they don't align with it, then they don't align with it. Like we mm-hmm. don't, we don't, I don't care. Like, I mean, like if, if that's not important to you and, and the stuff and how we got to, I mean, we're documenting it all as we go of how we got to where we got to. And, uh, and, and this is a seventh generation activity, right? Like I can, I can imagine seven generations in the future when we're far removed, you know, figuring out somewhere, some way, shape or form, like, like what, 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 where the, what did Chris and true think about this? And like, why did, why did they, why, why did this happen? You know? Um, well it's here. Like we, this is, this is where it came from and this is why it's here. That's why this activity aligns to, to that idea and vice versa. I'll give you another great example of um, there's a reason why we're not doing the core values quest today. Um, I mean, we got to the point in time where we were trying to like put together a customer journey mapping um, uh, or, or not customer like journey mapping of this whole entire, it was getting way too complex and way too over the top. And we were like, well, we got to feed the, you know, we got to, we got to have this much in the pipeline. And like, you know, we got to have like, you know, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was too much. Like it wasn't, this is not what we want to do. And it, and it didn't align to what we were trying to accomplish here from like with that seventh generation Iroquois, um, uh, side of everything. So that was why we put a pause to it. And, and we still know what we want to do coming out of this whole entire thing. And we will, we'll get to it, um, you know, in time. Uh, but, uh, and if we don't, somebody else will, hopefully, you know, like, I don't, I don't know, but that doesn't, that's, that doesn't matter to us, I guess. We're, we're doing what we can do today um, to progress this culture, uh, where it goes into the future. Like, I know that it feels safe and protected right now today. And, um, and some of the stuff that we were doing before, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I'm true. I don't know if you agree, but I, I don't know if, like, I don't think that aligned, you know, um, uh, I think mm-hmm. it was getting, it was, it was getting too much, you know, um, and it was, we were, we were, we were specifically trying to go recruit people to go do certain things, you know, like, that's not how this is supposed to work, you know, like it's, a, right. like it, it's, it's supposed to be organic and, and people that are, that are enjoying what they're doing and, and, and we're aligning to that and creating meaningful work and meaningful relationships. So, yeah. um, yeah, it, it, just doesn't, it just wouldn't last seventh generation. It just right. won't. I mean, the activity we doing with the core values class, it just doesn't align. It isn't, you know, it could not sustain uh, for seven generations. The I mean, if we, if we think about the, the year of magical learning, can we sustain that for seven generations? Of course we can. I mean, we, yeah. we, I mean, the thing is, you know, we get, uh, you know, get my kids in and your kids in right. and then they're going to do the same thing. They're going to learn thing is in life i mean if you don't learn then i mean what else is there i mean it's it's not like you can stop learning so when we're doing the seventh the the year of magical learning right the yomo episode we we learning every day right that's something that for me i don't see an end to it and i I can pass that on to my kids and my kids to their kids and their kids to their kids and that can sustain seven generations so looking Looking at that as a compass, right? We know that this is something that can be sustained seven generations. The core values quest isn't yet. I mean, we need yeah. to maybe refine it in a way that could be. Right. But at the you know the 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 first attempt, the first versions of the core values quest, um, it wasn't sustainable. It was a short term thing, and 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 that's why we pivot. We say, hey, you know, it doesn't align right. for the seventh generation. It does. It could not live that long. And so if you if we use that as a compass to to map what we do or to who are uh, you know basically you know use as a guide to go back to the middle because we what we try to qualify this quest and it, it wasn't aligning. So we said, well, we need to stop. We can't continue to do it because we knew where the compass was, we knew where the point of reference was, and that helped us. And otherwise we'd be spinning our heads around, yeah. wasting our time doing the core budget quest, stressing out because we have no idea what we're doing. Right. We won't, we would not enjoy uh trying to to I guess coordinate and 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 operate this core values quest. Right. And that's and that's the, the biggest thing that the air core, seventh generation air course is giving us. I and mean, it giving us more clarity and more directions because we we have this this long uh, path that any any like detraction from it is going to show yeah right and so we don't waste it becomes unsustainable 
I mean, it's not sustainable. Like doing would... stuff for because, like Blake was saying, doing stuff out of necessity because you think that you know, like we don't know anything. We don't know where this is going. Like you know, like all I like we cannot predict. You can't like sure you you might have some short term success. Like if you really put try to impose your will onto something. Um, you might have some short-term success. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of businesses that have short-term success and then they get sold or acquired or fold or whatever it may be. But you know, like, there's very few cultures that survive 100, 50 years, 100 years, 500 years, 1,000 years. You know, I mean, there's like the, the rarefied error when you get into that seventh generation, you know, um, uh, cultures that are still around that, that, are, that are functioning and, and growing and thriving. Like, I mean, that's, that's, that's rare, right? I mean, like that's really, 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 really rare. Rare. I mean, that would be something that started in the what the like eighteen hundreds at this point in time, you mm-hmm. know, um, and and is still around today. So, I mean, I don't. I, I mean, I'm sure I there's mean, some. You can you can count those on on your hands. The businesses Probably. that that was you know started in eighteen hundred and still here today. Right. I mean, it can't be more than forty or fifty. You know, in the. I mean, well, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, it's not a lot. <laughs> um, is is I think we can all feel safe to say that. So, um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 an interesting concept, and it's something that, like, if you do it right and you leverage it right, I, I think everybody's happier along the way. You know, I mean, I I, I don't know about you, True, or or even Blake. I mean, I know you did some of the stuff with us with the Core Values Quest in terms of trying to operationalize a little bit and to be a mentor. It just wasn't sustainable to what we were trying to do. You know, we were we were trying to. I don't know, Blake. What was your thoughts on that? I mean, I think if it's something that someone is seeking, I think it can be a good thing. And I think that some, you know, it, it yeah, is it sustainable? Can it be repeated with, you know, guaranteed success every time? No. But I mean, I think, I think it, there's a lot of benefit and value to it if someone is, you know, seeking or searching for something like that. Right. You're right. Can you build a business and try to, it's not something you can necessarily go out and try to sell to people. It's something almost someone well, has could. To. <laughs> I mean, I mean well, you could, but that's not what we're trying to do. I mean, there's right. a lot of people that try to sell per- personal growth and development journeys. That wasn't what our goal was, you know, that, that had nothing to do with what building a culture was about, you know, like, I mean, and that, and that was what we, it became like this operation around a small portion of what we were trying to do. Like what you and I did and true and you and I, all three of us did together with your journey, that was totally organic. That was people trying to explore. That was the seventh generation activity. Like when, when it was just picking up random people off of Upwork and, you know, throwing them in and just to feed a pipeline number and trying to build like operations around it and enforcing that, like, then that was us trying to force our, our, our will onto something, you know, and that wasn't, that's not, it's not sustainable. Yeah, and the key word is forcing it because, you know, it's one of those things where it has to align because the pe- the person that comes into a company, they have to want it and they have to be initiated by themselves. Hey, you know, I want to learn. I want to be better. And this is a way for me to do that. And that can be sustainable. It's about trying that person to to have his his, his own motivations without forcing it. Yes, you can say, well, I can be a guy for you and then you have to be a guy for someone else. And you, you, you are making that person doing something they may not want. But if a person wants to teach and a person wants to learn, it's a natural connections. And to me, that is sustainable. So we have to, like I say, the core values quest is not a total failure. It's just that we have to tweak it to the point where right. it has to be self-driven. It cannot be forcing somebody to say, hey, you know, you going through this uh this quest, right? And then you're gonna have to guide somebody to do the quest and they have to guide somebody to quest. Yes, it could be it could be done, but you have to give them an external incentive, an external push or stimuli to make them do that. Right. What we want is we want to have somebody say, I want it so much that I'm willing to pay you to learn from you. All right. And so that's the thing is they have that incentive to learn. And then the the, the guy inside have to they have the the joy of being able to guide somebody. I mean, that me and Chris, you know, we we love to to uh, guide people as long as they want to do it genuinely, not because right. they say, "Oh, I have to go through this value quest because I want something else." And so, to me, that isn't sustainable because um, it's like a meme, right? A meme is like like a joke. Um, if if I tell you a joke and you think it's funny, you can tell someone else, 
and they can test someone else and they can test someone else. But if I don't think a joke is good, then I won't uh, stop, right? So you right. want a joke that can be replicated like a meme. I mean, it, it spread like that, like an idea. And so building something with the uh, seventh generation in mind will have those kind of characteristics. And like that a... will kind of carry on without having to have a lot of force and energy put into it. It's like, it's like Fight Club, you know, when they would show up on yes, the door yes. and uh, and, and they would sit outside. They would stand outside the door for, you know, what was, I don't know, four days. And somebody would just come and say so, whatever, whatever that whole process was. And and like, you know, they're like, I want to be here. Like, I mean, this is what I, I want this culture. I want to be a part of that. Like, yes, right? you know, so yes. like the, we're laying the track, if you will, for for that right now. You know, um, there's. Yeah, 200... we don't talk about company. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, 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 uh, you know, two hundred and I think forty-seven of these so far, and you know, I'm at like two fifty or something like that. I just, mm -hmm. I just loaded these up a couple of days ago. You know, we're, we're, we're marching toward three sixty-five, and you know, at the end of the day, though, that's not stopping there either. I mean, I could foresee, you know, people doing their own journeys, and we, like we talked about, like making you, the book. You, you did know, have, I a, a guess. Uh... I guess oh, yeah. reflection, snow, right? Yeah, snow, snow, um, snow exactly. So this is like, this is where I think this is where the 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 uh, meme in the i the, the I guess the distributions of the idea is going right. to take off because you know you're gonna have a guest uh post and then you know other people will say hey you know I like his post I have my own my own thoughts I'm gonna do a post as well and then they just continue and continue and keep getting bigger like a snowball. You know, you know, what's funny is I, I've been, uh, you know, whenever I post these like new, new ones on here, I have to go back and read my own stuff and, you know, do it a little bit of editing or whatever. And, and, um, and I don't even remember anymore half the stuff that I wrote, but I'm, I'm almost like, man, that's a really good reminder. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, shit, I need to go read my own stuff again, you know, like, and, uh, and, and to, I, that's why I love doing this. It's a good reminder about the seventh generation Iroquois, you know, th mm -hmm. that's not a word that true and I have said in a long time. That was what this meeting was. And and became, but we don't even talk about it anymore because we just know like this is the seventh generation Iroquois meeting, but we don't say these things and we don't talk about what that means and we don't talk about some of these other stuff. This is why this is so important for us to go through these things. And and I'm probably gonna go back through my own year magical learning journey for the rest of my life in some capacity, you know, because like this is this is my memory palace, you know. This is this these are these are important, these are important learned learned lessons that have been hard fought and and struggled through and discussed and and uh and and what we're building going forward and and we have to lead by example i mean this is the, this is we're, we are the culture right you know like this is what we do like this is what we're trying to do and this is how we want to live our life to to find meaningful work and grow me develop meaningful relationships and and live a balanced existence you know so like that that's that's this you know i mean that's it, i don't know it feels good <laughs> and as a as a human being those are the two things that we need because we are social creatures and we need to have some kind of meaningful work and that's something that is universal in everybody that I've 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 come across. I mean, so I would say, you know, nine ninety nine point nine nine percent of all human beings would need meaningful work and meaningful relationship. Agreed. Awesome. You guys have any final thoughts here? Uh before we before we wrap for the day? Yeah, you know, you have to go, uh, you have to do your uh, play offense. Nah, don't don't play defense if you don't have to. Love it. Blake? Yeah, it applies not only in business, but every day. It's, it's life. Yeah. Life, you know, whatever is love life, play offense. Couldn't agree more. I mean, if it doesn't fit, Stop doing it. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I know draw that sounds a different so draw a different play. I mean, that's why right, I love yeah. I love football because you know, you if it doesn't work, try a different play. Right, like you're, you're, <laughs> what 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 you care about doesn't go away, right? Like, I mean, like yeah, like you said, I mean, if, your if goal is still the same. Tomorrow, right, exactly. I mean, it's it's we're, we're our goal is still to learn something every day. That could be there could be five hundred bajillion things that we do together as a as a as a clubany you know, that, that, that expresses that value. Like it doesn't have to be this. Mm -hmm. Like it could be whatever it could be this, right. but it could also be an, an infinite number of other ways to express that, you know? So if you hit a dead right. end and you're not doing that, then stop it. And if you are, and if you're, and if you've run your course through whatever you're trying to do, then yeah. find something else to express it with, you know, I mean, it's, it's really that simple in my, in my personal opinion, but it's also so hard to do in actuality. Cause it's, you know, like Blake, you and I were talking about before, 
we jumped on this call, like, you know, uh, daycares and work and all this other stuff. And it's like, you know, I, I look at my, I look at my wife right now and, and, you know, I love her to death, but she's struggling, you know, cause she just started a charter school. She's also doing two jobs because she's teaching right now because they're so growing enrollment. Um, and she needs to step into the classroom, but she's also trying to start, you know, she's, it's a startup basically. I mean, she's, she's, she is struggling. She's struggling to find time to, to, to exercise, to do other stuff she likes to do. And, um, you know, and, and she's, you know, she's struggling and I, and I need to, I need to step up and help her and, you know, cause she matters to me and she's important to me, but at the same time, like, like these are, these are the activities, you know, you want to almost take a pause back, you know, if, if we're talking about what we're talking about right now, it's like, okay, what am I doing? What can I do in that environment? If I was her, I'd be like, what can I do in that environment that I really care about? And that's all I'm going to focus on because like, I can't do all this other stuff because it's not, I can't just force it, you know, like the more that I force it, the more that the more that I get depressed, you know what I mean? Um, and it gets, you know, I, and yeah, that's just it's not just fun a for out of control. Right. And then each decision that you make, it's not just like, okay, this is what I need to do in this moment to make this work. Also, it's like, well, how is this going to, how is this affecting my relationship with my husband or how is this real? You know, it's like, you have to think, you have to think ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, maybe I'm, you know, when you're just focused on making something work in the moment to also take a step back and say, what kind of effects could it, what is could this be affecting down the road that I don't see while I'm just trying to accomplish my goal right this second? That's a great point. I mean, that's the compound effect both ways, right? Like, you know, the, the more that you force things, the more that the compound effect goes the opposite direction in a negative manner. And the more that you align things, the more the compound direction, you know, compound effect goes in the, in the, in the, I don't know. We, we don't know where we're going, but you know, it go, it's going in the direction that we want it to go. I don't, I don't know where we're going, but like, you know, like, you know, it, it's going, we know that it's going in the right direction toward the seventh generation, you know, um, uh, mindset, I guess, if you will. So yeah, that's yeah, a great it goes point. Both like, ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. All right. Well, thanks for the conversation, fellas. The question we can leave uh, for everybody following along is what would happen if you stopped reacting to the world uh, and started using your core values to play offense instead? Um, something to think about. And uh, thanks for joining us and we will see you all tomorrow. Sounds good. See ya.